Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone present today. The scope for psychology has widened over the years. The awareness on topics pertaining to mental health has just started to seep it in the masses. The landscape is changing and more and more mental health experts are required to be in the field uh, to help individuals in distress and bring forth their authenticity and genuineness with professional expertise. Social scientists are today reflecting on the deep-seated taboos of the society that makes good mental health accessible to all. Scientists with us with you some of her insightful experiences of her journey with psychology. We have today with us Ms. Serish Amjad, who completed her graduation from psycho in psychology from IP College for Women and her post-graduation from Tata Institute of Social Science Sciences, Bamian Academy of Leadership in Mental Health. She has done internships in diverse areas that includes clinical settings like Mulchan and Wim Hans, uh, prisons like Tihar Central Jail, MNCs like Nestle. Ms. Serish is a qualified counseling psychologist and is presently working at Silver Oak Health, an employee assistance program provider to around 200 corporates. She has experience of taking one-on-one -on -one sessions, couple and group sessions, and has interest in doing research and delivering workshop workshops. I, on behalf of St. Xavier's, welcome you, and I hope students will have an insightful and enriching session with you today. Now, over to you. Thank you so much, Abraham, for that very generous introduction. I'm glad to be here today, and also thank you all for giving me this space. This is your last day, and I hope this session gives a good uh, closure to your career aspects, and psychology gives you opportunities, as in what all you can do and in some way or the other does spark some interest in the field. So that's the objective with which I'm here today. Given that psychology is a field where there is so much to learn, I believe one is always a student. And I myself have been a student for eight years now in the field. What is interesting is that after learning and understanding how the human mind and behavior works is that we can work in diverse settings. So. The aim is to share with you some of these diverse settings wherein psychologists can work. I'll share with you some of my own experiences along the way to see if it can just add on to what knowledge is already available. So given that most many of us are thinking about whether psychology interests them and some of us are already studying, we can start with a brief introduction of what it entails. So psychology majorly has three components and psychologists work with people's thoughts, feelings, and actions. They work across three levels, which can be individual, one-on-one, -on -one. it can be in groups, and as well as on a very social level to make some impacts on the society and help communities develop. As a field, psychology is academically intensive. Many courses require you to continue your uh, education for your postgraduate levels. It is a highly research-oriented field, given that we are working with humans and humans are evolving on a daily basis. Research helps us keep in touch with these uh, developments. And like I said, it has diverse applications and let's see if we can explore some of them today together. So we can begin with counseling psychologists. So counseling is a very interpersonal process to explore concerns, understand problems, and help the clients learn management of these concerns. So here, counseling psychologists work both with mental health concerns, which can be, say, like transitioning to a different phase of life, which can be adjustment, uh, say, you know, after they're relocating to different places, adjustment with change of any sorts. It can be work-life balance, relationship problems. So any of these concerns, as well as mild mental health disorders, which can include things like stress, anxiety, depression, and eating disorders, to name a few. The goal of counseling per se is to increase a sense of well-being and reduce discomfort. And it involves facilitating change from a level of ineffectiveness to a level of effectiveness, whereas clients are able to function individually, interpersonally, occupationally on their everyday life. 
counselors can work with individuals in one on one sessions they can work with couples families as well as with groups so some of the settings in which counselors can work and mind you it can get as creative you counseling psychologists can work in as diverse fields as they want they can get as creative as they want with their application here are just few settings that i can uh, share with you today and many of them where i also have some personal experience of working with so beginning from prisons in prisons counselors work not just with the mental health aspect or uh, concerning the clients but also with some legalities of the whole setup this is also commonly termed as psycho legal aid that counselors provide oh, i'm so sorry for that and given that the whole atmosphere of prisons can be very daunting for offenders for people who are guilty uh, expression of emotions is one area where counselors work actively in prison settings it may be to help them express the unpleasant emotions that they're experiencing it could be anger sadness hurt disappointment resentment revenge so all of those are few feelings where counselors work with sometimes inmates or offenders already have existing mental health conditions because of which they are in the prison and sometimes because of the atmosphere of prison certain conditions can develop so counselors also work on managing and helping the clients navigate both of these conditions so tihar jail is one jail uh, one prison in india where they are actively including counselors there are a lot of organizations uh, in which counselors are working in collaboration with to provide assistance with uh, it's it's a very different and exciting opportunity you can also as from my personal experience i can say that sometimes just listening to the clients there giving them a sense of hope and support can be very helpful hope and support both are very strong tenets of counseling field in general moving on to adoption agencies it's a very uh, blooming field right now and counseling here work with both adopting parents adoptive parents as well as the child who is uh, preparing to be adopted so they counsel both the adoptive parents with the responsibilities of adoption preparing them you know to bring the child at home making the environment safe for the child uh, seeing how they can uh, address their own concerns of taking on this responsibility as well as helping the child to integrate in the family many a times uh, when children are getting adopted they are abandoned by their birth parents they may be uh, orphaned because of certain reasons so counselors also work with the children developing them developing the preparedness in them to be integrated and adopted by parents a very uh, significant organization in this regard is padme p a d m e it's based in bangalore and if this an area that interests you do definitely check out their work and see how you feel about it then we move to schools and schools offer a place where counselors work with diverse concerns not just academics but also other concerns that may be extra curricular may also be personal in nature counselors help students uh, manage through successes manage through failures relationships which can be with friends it can be romantic relationships it can also be familial relationships relationships with teachers and given that school can be a place uh for both growth as well as hamperment counselors do work greatly in helping the students make the most of their uh school life as well as setting a very strong foundation base for them to navigate after school uh so that's some work that school counselors do we then move on to family court so recently according to the legal institutions of india counselors are attached uh, with the court as well as practice independently wherein any couple who wishes to go for divorce has to consult a psych a therapist a psychotherapist a counselor to take in uh, sessions to see if there is any scope for reuniting if there is any scope for con for trying to co-parent the family after divorce so counselors work on diverse issues again they also help the child they also help the family accept the change that uh, they are about to take on it may also involve adjusting to the responsibility shifting from that of husband and wife but still holding on to the responsibilities of being a mother and father to their child sometimes counselors also work with uh, the children involved in divorce which may involve uh, 
preparing them for custody, trying to understand their own emotions, managing this whole thing, which is out of their control, something that they do not want yet have to accept. So that's also a very sensitive area where counselors work. Moving on something uh, that has been established for a while is career counseling. So career counselors help students explore their career choices in relation to what are some of their strengths, some of their weaknesses, as well as capabilities. Here, aptitude assessments play a major role. And I'm not sure if uh, ap you are having an aptitude assessment as part of your practicals, but sometimes an exposure to the same is also given in the 12th uh, practicals that I think Shubhramam also gave us, gave me when I was studying uh, in 12th. So that's, an, uh, that's another field. Workplace counseling, I can say, is one of the most blooming fields these days, specifically in the pandemic. It's also a field where I am involved in presently. So given that there is an increase in work pressure, which is resulting in stress, it's resulting in a lot of lifestyle changes and problems. So employee well-being has taken a forefront and all organizations are working towards towards their employees' well-being, there has been a general establishment that employee well-being does result in employee performance and organizational success, and it has resulted in an increase in opportunities and increase in focus from the organization's perspective as well. So organize, uh, workplace counselors work not just with helping the clients manage the work stress as work stress, but also in helping them manage their work as well as life. Given that all of us are working from home, this has become all the more important because our work can affect our family life and our family life can affect work. And therefore, workplace counselors play a very crucial role here, increasing not only the sense of well being, but also productivity and performance from a company perspective. Uh, next, we come to old age homes. So, old, in old age homes, counselors work with geriatric population, that is, the elderly people. It's a, it's a stage of life where one is transitioning. There are physical illnesses involved. There is separation from family. Some individuals may also experience widowhood. So counselors do play a major role in providing emotional support, navigating through this space, as well as building a sense of social support for the people residing in these old age homes. Lastly, some another field which has been here for a while are rehabilitation centers. So counselors work with people who have addictions that of substances, maybe say alcohol, tobacco, or drugs. So they work to support them throughout the process of recovery, which can start from motivating them to quit the substance, managing them and withdrawal symptoms. Because once one is uh, using a substance on a regular basis, so as to qualify for addiction, it's not just your mind, but also the body which continues wanting that substance. So one can experience a lot of physical withdrawal symptoms and counselors play a major role helping them to manage these symptoms. Another important step here becomes maintaining recovery because like I said, it's not just the mind, but the body also wanting the substance. So counselors help the client maintain their recovery as well as preparing them for relapse. These days, I think the field of addiction again has become very creative given that there is an increase in addictions apart from substances such as gaming addiction social media addiction so all of this has again made the field has again renewed the field in that sense so these are some settings wherein counseling psychologists can work and you can also explore once you keep a lookout you'll see that the opportunities are not just limited to these um, eight settings that i've shared but can be implemented wherever you go and wherever you wish to intervene the next profession of counsel, uh, the next profession that many psychologists are enrolled in is that of clinical psychologists. Clinical psychologists, while uh, counseling psychologists, they work with mild mental health disorders that we discussed. Clinical psychologists work with severe mental health disorders such as bipolar disorders, such as schizophrenia, personality disorders, wherein there is some sense of break from reality. So what you are perceiving as reality, as well as the objective reality does not match and that, that, and that qualifies for a mental disorder. So clinical psychologists work with such populations, such populations of clients. Their major work includes diagnosis of the condition. Clinical psychologists are trained to diagnose people with mental disorders. And this is done through both an interviewing process which involves understanding the client's history, their family history, educational history, occupational, 
uh, what has happened that has led them to the present condition what could be certain protective factors understanding all of that they also do say like a mental status examination of checking say the judgment of the client how they are speaking how they are dressed how uh, they are thinking their attention concentration so host of mental uh, functions which are impaired when one is experiencing a mental disorder so psychologists clinical psychologists keeping both of these information in mind come to a diagnosis and many a times they support their diagnosis through psychometric tests which are available so these are again standardized tests of uh, which are which are administered on clients to support or get some more clarity on the diagnosis so after diagnosis what comes is treatment planning and clinical psychologists work majorly in helping the clients reduce the symptoms that they are experiencing which are hampering their everyday life as well as management of uh, management after symptom reduction so many times a lot of mental health conditions require not just symptom reduction but a lifestyle change to help you uh to help pre- extend that phase of what we may term as normalcy it's a highly controversial term but what clinical psychologists term as normalcy so the aim is to manage the lifestyle so that that period wherein the client is not experiencing any unpleasant uh, symptoms or discomfort is uh, is maximized is maximized yeah so <laughs> clinical psychologists work in different settings they can work in hospitals they can work in private clinics as well as they can have their own centers where a group of psychologists say clinical psychologists psychiatrists uh nilotpal oh, sir we lost her yeah. yes yeah 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 sorry So yeah coming on to the next field of uh, of mental health professionals is psychiatrist so psychiatry is a medical field and psychiatrists can be said to be doctors of mental health so along with diagnosis just like clinical psychologists do psychiatrists are also trained for prescribing medications and that is why psychiatry requires a science background and an mbbs training so if some of you are interested in doing medical science but are also interested in psychology this can be a good fuse for you not just uh, for interest but it can also help you increase your options of specialization after doing your mbbs so psychiatrists again work in hospital settings as well as can have their own private practices moving on we come to developmental psychologists and developmental psychologists work with both children and parents major of their work includes identifying developmental delays and disabilities and this is done again through a process of screening which is in for which involves interviewing the parents so understanding what has been the developmental history of the child consisting of post a uh, pre and post pregnancy experiences some developmental milestones and how and when they achieved it as well as by observing the child so uh, again like clinical psychologists standardized assessments do come here uh, come in here and play a major role to help the psychologists support the diagnosis to get more clarity here according to the diagnosis once that is done uh, developmental psychologists help plan for inter- intervention so intervention here can be focused on motor skill development helping students with fine motor skills cross motor skills uh, say like holding pencils grabbing objects uh picking things up and keeping it at a place all of these can be affected in development so developmental psychologists work with motor skill development they may work with social development where in certain children may experience uh, delays or s- delays in uh, developing their social skills of interacting so similar very small social uh, s- a uh, social skill that may not develop is speech so people may think uh, parents do expect their children at a re- at an at an age to interact with them not just verbally but also non verbally so all of these things are areas where uh, developmental psychologists work then we have emotions such as delay and dev- delay in say a simple uh, milestone of emotional development is when the child starts smiling that can affect the emotional development so developmental psychologists keep a track what we have as developmental milestones which is in a way a standardized and a researched a uh, timeline of what develops in the child when so the de- developmental psychologists keeping that in mind help trace the development of child 
identify what have been areas where there are delays in reaching that milestone and accordingly plan their intervention. Like I said, language intervention, I did cover cognitive intervention, which involves problem solving, simple things like making puzzles, using blocks, all of these help plan intervention and also assess the developmental level of the child. Uh, developmental psychologists work in collaboration with parents. So they help them firstly accept the condition, accept the delay of the child. According to the condition, help set realistic expectations through psychoeducation, that is through sharing knowledge, help them to understand what their child, what their child's condition is, what are the delays, as well as to empower them to be uh, aiders in that process of growth. So this is some work that developmental psychologists do. Again, they can work at hospital settings, they can work in private sectors. Uh, important organization, a very famous organization in uh, Delhi is Children First. They are doing some great work in developmental psychology with not just focusing on psychologists, but creating a multidisciplinary team to see how the child can benefit. Moving on, we come to the field of organizational uh, psychology and organizational psychologists work with everything that comes under the purview of organizational life and employee behavior. So it can vary. Some of the things that I've mentioned here include say recruitment. So it starts from the process of say interviewing a candidate. Who do they think is a good fit for their organization, keeping in mind the values of the organization. Then they may also involve some personality assessment to see whether the personality of the potential employee is suiting with the job description and job requirements of the role. Then after recruitment, the work also extends to learning and development. So they may try seeing what are already some skills that the that our employee has or that uh, the employee group departments at a department level or at an individual level have. What are few things or few trainings that we need to give to our employees to help them uh, pass through the gap, which may result in greater productivity, more success of teams. So it involves assessing existing knowledges, knowledge and skills, as well as providing uh, trainings, providing opportunities to develop the skills and knowledge. So uh, given from my experience in one of uh, the MNCs in Delhi NCR itself, so we worked on a simple task wherein employees were lacking in their fluent communication, fluent English communication. It's a multinational company. So uh, employees are expected to communicate with people globally. So having say developed or uh, developing a Toastmasters club, which is an organization which helps employee improve their English communication skills was set in place. It can also, another work that I was involved in was uh, of adjustment of share um, relocation and adjustment to see how people who relocate to different countries from their own hometowns to another country in India, it can also be within cities, given how diverse we are as a country to help them adjust and see, uh, provide them uh, provide them an easy transition to the new culture that they're coming to. I'm just sharing these examples to let you know that learning and development where psychologists work in are not just very specific to the task or the job, but they may also involve certain peripheral developments or peripheral opportunities that may in turn or indirectly affect and improve performance. Moving on, they also work in organizational culture. So assessing the culture of the organization, which can be say done through the type of language that is used, whether people or employees are addressing their seniors through sir, ma'am, or whether they're addressing on their first name basis. Is there any uniform that they're required to wear? Is there a hierarchy of the kind of, is there a hierarchy in the uniform that they're wearing? So all of these help assess what the organizational culture is. So organizational culture in general develops to promote work, to promote the environment of work so that organizational success is achieved. Many times organizational organization cultures can, move, can be detrimental to growth. So organizational psychologists then work in to assess the present culture, see what are some things that are preventing the company to be successful and slowly plan interventions to bring about a change in culture that can foster organizational success. Organizational development also comes in play here, wherein psychologists work to understand the current status of the organization and to promote change. Here, 
development is done in terms of change in strategy and change in terms of structure whereas in culture uh, the change is brought on about the major softer issues and more um, communication or not so overt issues organizational development involves hard changes that is changing say company's vision mission policies strategies to promote growth so organizational psychologists again work in human resource organizations of uh, human resource departments of various organizations as well as some consulting firms employee well being here plays another major role so a lot of organizational psychologists given that they have a holistic understanding of the field of psychology also many times work with workplace counselors to promote well being of their employees and in that way promote development of the organization at large mm -hmm. then we move on to a field which uh, where psychologists work and are called social workers they are at the forefront social workers are at the forefront of community work they go out and work in the community and with the community so given that uh, you know there is a large gap specifically in india in the prevalence of mental health conditions as well as access to trained and specialized care the role of social workers becomes extremely crucial and many many of them work with the most disadvantaged and vulnerable communities so it may involve working with say the tribal populations of india it may involve working with say the slum urban slums in india in delhi as i'm sure all of us see slums around us it may involve working with homeless people so these are all very disadvantaged and vulnerable communities and social workers therefore play a major major role given that disadvantage being disadvantaged and uh, prone to all of these vulnerabilities in itself has a lot of mental health com mental health conditions attached social workers create awareness of diverse mental health conditions that can exist and in that way they also prevent the development of conditions by say developing skills that may help your may help the community prevent the development of a disorder since if someone is homeless there is constant stress for food how are they going to arrange for their food how are they going to arrange for their shelter tonight all of these conditions may create a lot of stress and on a long term stress may result in greater mental health more severe mental health conditions so social workers therefore work not just for at the management level but also at a prevention level helping the community develop certain skills develop resources to prevent certain conditions from uh, setting in a very major major and important work that social worker social workers do is also creating the capacity of the community that is we can say community resource development given that all psychologists aim for the clients or the people to become independent themselves nobody wants them to be dependent on the psychologist social workers at that at a social level play that role of developing the community so it can involve building a social support within the community to provide uh, for people who may need it it may involve developing vocational skills that can eventually help people get uh, avenues for a livelihood so these are certain uh, work areas that social workers are involved in given that social social workers go in the community and work with the community they are also at a very good position for early diagnosis and intervention so once you read more about it and i'm sure you already have some exposure to it that once there is a condition how early do we intervene affects how much there is a rate of recovery or how much one can manage uh, the un, how the manage the severity of the symptoms so social workers then play a major role in early diagnosis and intervention so that there is the chances of severity of symptoms is reduced again many times what happens is that given that mental health in general is a very stigmatized field people who may have developed mental health conditions may experience stigma and discrimination from the society so social workers therefore also help in rehabilitation and reintegration of people back into the society so they help them slowly and gradually to live back in the community from which they came uh, they came to challenge the stigma and discrimination and in that process help them know that they are not alone they have help and they are they are supported so that's some work uh, the banyan is a very uh, famous organization in chennai who is working towards uh, mental health illnesses of homeless women they are doing some ground breaking work with developing uh, community resources making the communities independent to support the women 
And if that is something that interests you, definitely uh, you can check it out. They're called The Banyan. And Home Again is the project which has now extended uh, to an international level. So Sri Lanka, uh, Bhutan, Nepal are all countries which are implementing the Home Again model. Home Again uh, model mm -hmm. is for people, is for women who were uh, diagnosed with mental health conditions. So they were treated and now they're rehabilitated back into their community. So women who are homeless, who have lost their families are coming together and making, giving each other their opportunities to have that family bond again and support them in recovery. Mm -hmm. Moving on, um, there is also an opportunity to work in special education. So special educators can help students with varied disabilities to learn and make progress specifically in academics. Special education in general is based on the belief that there is no one size which fits all. So special educators identify learning areas of students, not just their weaknesses, but also their strengths and capabilities. And keeping all of these in mind, they build individualized lesson plans. So focus is on what they learn and how the students learn them. The belief is that different children may need different modifications. They may have their different ways of learning. So special educators work with individual, with individual students to help them achieve these uh, academic goals per se. So students' progress and learning is also assessed, keeping in mind their lesson goal plans and not just the general, general plans that the school has for all classes. Special educators therefore work in collaboration with students as well as uh, with schools as well as teachers along with parents of students. So it's again a collaborative effort which helps them to uh, help them to help the child make progress academically. Then we come to teaching and uh, teachers work in both schools as well as across colleges of different levels, undergraduation, postgraduation, MPhil. They share knowledge of psychology with the next generation and teachers therefore play a major role in providing a foundational knowledge as well as skill development, which together prepare the students to enter the field of psychology. They can also be the people who give spark for students to develop their interest in psychology. And, um, and I'm, I can confidently say that Shubhra ma'am was that for me. I hope she, you're also experiencing and getting to learn from her with so much that she has to offer. Moving on, there is another field which is called uh, mental health uh, advocacy and mental health advocates are people who work for the human rights of people with mental health conditions. So given that a lot of mental disabilities uh, as well as diverse uh, mental health conditions may inhibit uh, people to share or to bring up or to voice their voices, uh, mental health advocates work for these uh, people. They work to promote their human rights. They work to combat the stigma that is there as well as to improve the care services. Given that nobody, uh, given that they cannot share their feedback or they are usually prone to your human condition violations, mental health advocate work for them. They work with government, uh, with governments as well to develop policies that can enhance their care. People given that people with disabilities have always been excluded from the society and by the society, the work of mental health advocate also aims towards inclusion of people here. And it may again uh, work on different levels. So there is this one organization called Anjali. It's again an NGO working for mental health advocacy. So a simple example, their work was involved in transforming psychiatric hospitals. So if any of you have certain exposure, psychiatric wards or uh, inpatient wards can be very dull and blooming gray walls or you know dull backgrounds, which can in turn make the mood gloomy, which can in turn, uh, which can in turn inhibit uh, recovery. So Anjali was one organization which was involved in transforming, uh, transforming psychiatric hospitals itself in Kolkata. So if you now see, I think they've worked with four or five hospitals Lumbini Park is one hospital that I remember. And now you'll see that they have colorful spaces. Club clients are no longer required to wear certain specific uniforms. There is freedom and their right to choose what they want to wear. Earlier, there was this, there was a segregation between male and female wards. They were kept in isolation. So it has more become like a space which promotes growth rather than inhibits human behavior. So 
mental health advocacy again can differ across levels which was one thing then there's again like i said policy development to enhance and to provide people who cannot voice for themselves an opportunity to live a life full of dignity like any of us so that's a work of mental health advocate next we have psychologists who work as researchers given that you know psychology is one of the most dynamic and ever growing field researchers play a major 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 role here they objectively understand human thoughts feelings and actions in diverse settings and research work in turn helps us to deepen our understanding of the human phenomena that we already know as well as help us uncover the things that we don't know yet given that we are working with human mind human behavior which has the capacity to develop on a regular on a daily basis if i may say so research plays a major role here researchers play a major role here many researchers also work to develop the psychological tests and assessments that psychologists in other fields may use so like we have discussed say like some clinical psychological assessments aptitude assessments interest assessments so researchers can help in updating these assessments they can help in develop newer assessments so that's another field that comes under research uh researchers again can work with government organizations they can work with private research organizations as well as continue their own independent pursuits so again a lot of opportunities to work given that how we discussed earlier uh that psychology is a, a dynamic field it is not one can also be a researcher alongside with whatever profession you may choose to be you may choose to take even say if you are a counseling psychologist you may wish to continue research side by side to uh, get in touch with the recent developments to understand not just for yourself but also to share that knowledge with the community at large so research plays a major role in any field of psychology that you may take on so while well, what we have discussed for now are major fields which have been relatively established specifically in the indian context these are certain upcoming fields not very established in india but i'm sure uh, given the wide application of psychology one can take these on and they are soon to be they are here to stay if i may say so so an interesting field here is fashion psychology so fashion psychologists combine their interest in fashion as well as the knowledge of human behavior so they may work with the entire fashion industry and that may uh, in- include the consumers such as us who consume fashion products so why people are attracted to certain products what are the habits of consumption why is over consumption taking place then they may also work with the conditions of the fashion industry so people who are employed see the workers many times they are working in in human conditions they are working in stressful conditions so working for their betterment then fashion psychologists can also work with stylist say uh, the recent trend or the not so recent trend but recent awareness that has come in is that clothes are also an important method of communication you see a lot of celebrities wearing specific clothes say as i remember uh, when suddenly i'm forgetting the name but the vice president of usa um <laughs> shubhram can you help me here talking about al gore no no the vice president right now of the us female. yeah yeah the female the indian female uh kam kamla kamala kamla yeah yeah kamla has come yeah kamala harris okay the yes, vice president <laughs> the vice president of usa recently made a very strong um, a strong support for the environmental policies by wearing the green suit or to one of those conventions so all of these things i'm just letting you know how creative and upcoming psychology is so psychologists are working with how clothes can communicate your message can uh, present your stance to the wider uh, population and this is specifically to for public figures be it celebrities or you know people having that power then they are also working towards inclusion so representation of different race different body types people of different ages uh, to communicate that fashion is meant for everyone and not just a particular prototype that we've known throughout the ages so again a lot of opportunities in the field of fashion psychology then we have forensic psychologists who study about what makes people commit crimes and engage in anti social behaviors so while what we studied about prison settings can come as part of forensic psychology 
that is how it is happening right now but forensic psychology itself is taking a boom as a separate field wherein a uh, forensic psychologist work towards minimizing as well as preventing such criminal actions so involved they are involved in different parts of the legal system which may include taking testimonies of offenders before any verdict is given negotiating with the uh, duration of or with the uh, duration of uh, <laughs> the duration of the uh, what do you call okay i'm forgetting the term but uh, the duration of the verdict that's given how long are the other offenders going to be in prison what is the severity of their punishment sorry punishment so forensic psychologists again are working in all of these areas as well as they provide psychological services to inmates so while we discuss counseling psychology counsel uh, uh, the inmates or the offenders forensic psychology also work towards developing the correctional programs and different psychological services which may not just be limited to counseling so providing support groups providing a uh, vocational development providing providing areas where they can perform their skills learning and development again in within the prison tihar tihar jail is a it can be set as a foundational example in the indian context where in, uh, psychologists are doing great work to help the inmates not just uh, spend there or not just spend the time there but also preparing them to reintegrate back into the society a lot of research work is also being done to understand the criminal behavior so that policies or uh, legal aspects can be informed from them moving on we have sports psychology and sports psychologists work to understand individual athlete hurdles that affect their performance again they also work with team development so many a times what we may see since sports is a teams a uh, many sports involves team effort we may see that there may be interpersonal conflicts within teams which may impact their performance which may impact their success or winning of that particular uh, match or game so sports psychologists work there to see how the team can be developed better how can the employees have trust in each other uh, how can they improve their communication so all of that again sports is a field where there are a lot of injuries can be involved injuries not of physical in nature which can impair one's functioning so if such a case happens sports psychologists help the athletes deal with their injuries manage the stress that the sports profession or the athletes in general have of performance as well as accepting failure given that right now sport athletes are also in a very public eye and the public is actively Uh, involved in blaming them or you know attacking them when they do not perform in a certain way sports psychologists help them accept all of that accept failure as well as prepare them to to prepare them for this uh, public response that they get next we can uh, next i would like to talk about psycho oncology so psycho oncology is a field where a uh, psychologist work with clients who have uh patients of cancer who have been diagnosed with cancer so they work in helping them accept the diagnosis cancer comes with cancer is a is a well known bad news if i may say so so counseling uh, psycho oncologists help them to accept their diagnosis with diagnosis comes grief of not just the person who has been diagnosed but also the family members so help them process that grief the anxiety stress or depression that may come along with knowing about this condition sometimes uh, there are also physical impairments that may be involved few people are asked to incubate certain parts of their body removal of certain organs so uh, helping them address accept these impairments that may be a part of their larger physical diagnosis is a work is an area of work that uh, for psychologist here simple sometimes a uh, one very common symptom that all of us or side effect that all of us may know is hair loss in cancer many people are experience great body image issues no, anticipating that they may go bald so it's not just say like the physical illness of cancer with which psychologists work but also with the attached uh, conditions or attached attachments that may develop with cancer that uh, people go through so psycho oncology again Work, psycho oncologists again work with these range of issues lastly we have health psychology psycho oncology can be said to be a part of health psychology but it's a relatively distinct field in india 
it's quite separated health psychologists in general study how biology psychology and social factors influence health and illness their focus is on biological health and illness but they use psychological principles to understand why people are say not following their medication what is stopping people from engaging in healthy behaviors what are few things uh, that are inhibiting people from uh, from working towards their well being so they use psychological principles to promote health to prevent illness as well as to improve healthcare systems so they work into it they work to motivate individuals to engage in healthy behaviors or change unhealthy habits and they are also involved in developing healthcare policies if you are aware of uh, cult fitness which is a uh, very prominent and a, and a widespread chain of fitment of physical fitness in delhi ncr also has health psychologist in their uh, in their department called mindfit so not do not just are they offering services to improve physical fitness of their client their clientele but health psychologist also help the, these clients or these gym goers or these exercises to enhance their fitness journeys so that's again a beautiful combination of two fields which comes and where psychologists do work um so yeah this is majorly some fields of uh, psychology that have been here that are upcoming and just to conclude here we can say that psychology professionals have expertise in different fields and it is when they work together is when they can reach much they can reach their goals much holistically much faster it's not just collaboration within psychology of course like say how we discuss organizational psychologists can work with counseling psychologists to enhance well-being developmental psychologists can work with psychiatrists they can work with counseling psychologists similarly research is research researchers work with all fields so not just collaboration within the field of psychology but collaboration outside the field of psychology has resulted in a lot of upcoming fields like we discussed and also helps address the diverse problems or the diverse concerns that we as a human race experience so something like some of the more upcoming uh, interdisciplinary studies can be say of artificial intelligence how psychologists are contributing to the development of robotics to the development of what we are having now as alexa siri all of that a lot of psychologists are involved in that process so psychology as we discussed is a very a diverse field having multiple opportunities to develop and it's a dynamic dynamic field so anything that interests you basic knowledge of psychology can help you integrate those principles to these diverse settings and most importantly studying psychology in general will make you more aware of your own self your own thoughts emotions and behaviors as well as that of others and no psychologists do not read mind but through deeper understanding we can one can become sensitive and compassionate towards their own selves as well as others which i think does is the is the most important thing that keeps the human race going so i hope if nothing else this interests you and gives you some clarity on whether you want to take psychology or what you want to do if you've already taken psychology so with that i come to an end of all that i had uh in the presentation and if you have any questions any doubts if you want more clarifications i am here to help okay there are questions which have started to pour in for us mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh considering the scope of psychology uh do we have good institutions in india to help us get through with these careers these this questions mm -hmm. come from sahil Mm -hmm. and he has written that i'm aspiring for civil services after doing my law but can i consider psychology as my backup in civil services optional examination right definitely sir psychology does come as one of the specialization subjects that you can take in civil services a friend of mine is uh, has taken that so i'm pretty sure about it i am thinking that i know is that after civil services if you have a psychology background you can also be involved in recruitment of civil aspirants eventually given that you have a knowledge of uh, human mind and behavior and how we discussed interviewing uh, can uh, having that knowledge can inform your interviewing process so psychology can be a good option if you are taking up civil services it can be a helpful stream there as well 
and about the institutions yes we definitely do have good institutions there are a lot of government colleges and a lot of private colleges also offering uh, these diverse fields that are here definitely they do give you a strong theoretical base and for applied opportunities there are a lot of scopes i hope i've shared certain names if you want to know about specific field and where you can in turn gain experience i can also uh, help you with that okay there's another question that has come to us from prachi uh, ma'am are there some specific reasons why these upcoming fields have not gained much momentum despite the fact that cancer and health are the issues which need to be addressed as uh, early as possible or they are just flourishing right apraj thank you praji for that question i do uh, agree with you that they have not gained as much momentum as is required but the thing is that we are here and it's gaining momentum so a uh, mental health in general uh, you know has gained an acceptance very recently if i may say so so the opportunities that are flourishing are flourishing by the day uh, but given that if you have a belief in the power of mental health and how psychologists can work um any field can be your opportunity in that sense specifically with cancer and health psychology uh there has been a distinction between physical health and mental health and that's why i said it's a recent development where they both are uniting doctors in both the fields are accepting professionals in both the fields are accepting that mind and body works together and that's why they are relatively upcoming psycho oncology specifically has limited uh institutions limited institutions are offering that course as of now and so i hope as it gets established the more avenues for studying the same there's one institute if you're interested adyar cancer institute in chennai they are offering uh, psycho oncology and uh, they are one of the top uh, institutions for the same i think mphil in psycho oncology is what they offer Thank you, Sarish, mm -hmm. for giving us an mm -hmm. insight on this. Uh, two interesting mm -hmm. questions have come from mm -hmm. Karen. Do developmental mm -hmm. psychologists work with autistic children? And the mm -hmm. other question that she has asked is: Do psychologists sometimes have to work in disguise without mm -hmm. the knowledge of a client who is in a severe mental condition? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the second question: uh, Psychologists don't need to work in disguise. The major tenet of psychology is that. we don't go assuming that clients need help we help them uh, we expect them to help them when they think that they need help given that we are going with the assumption that they need help brings to fore our own biases so that's something uh, that's why disguise working in disguise may not be appropriate and ethical here however psychologists who are researchers may sometimes research in disguise when they uh, when the aim is to understand how the community or how a group is working without influencing their behavior through our presence researchers can work in disguise but other than that uh, working in disguise is not appreciated in any other field given that it violates the ethics and rights of humans we are working with and um, shubhra ma'am can you repeat the first question i yes, forgot that yes uh, do developmental psychologists work mm -hmm. with autistic children yeah definitely developmental psychologists work with children who have autism so a lot of developmental uh, conditions say autism aspergers now we have also tourette syndrome so all of these which affect uh, any form of development motor physical em uh, motor emotional social language all of these neurodevelopmental so developmental psychologists work with all of those individuals okay Uh, we have got a career related query from mm -hmm. amrita uh, ma'am i've taken up psychology in 12th and i was thinking about taking it up further in future but i don't want to be a psychologist instead i want to work in a company human resources team specifically where i can do team work manage groups go through the company policies hiring training and all that but i'm not sure if it has a great scope in india and abroad or not If psychology is a good subject to reach my ultimate goal of HR, I'm really conflicted about this whole mm -hmm. career option. Mm -hmm. Right, Amrita, I really feel you here, and psychology can definitely be a good subject if you're going, uh, if you want to pursue a career in human resources. It may give you an edge above all the commerce students who are coming to the field with the same skill set. So, you can do your 
graduation under graduation and psychology and then of course a lot of post graduation courses offer uh, psychology with hrm psychology and hrm or you may also go on to pursue say like separately human resource courses or mba courses which can open up opportunities for human resources human resources is definitely a field which has a lot of scope in india as well as abroad uh, so psychology can help you that and whatever other interest that you have mentioned here working with uh, groups team work company policies hiring training all of that that's the scope of work that organizational psychologists do work with so it's uh, it's definitely can be helpful if you want to to human resources moving forward Thank i think you. christ university in india offers uh, ma in psychology with hrm there's also i think miti bai college in bombay which offers uh, psychology hrm otherwise most commerce uh, business schools offer human resources masters mba all of that thank you Uh, the next question comes from prachi what is the real distinction between health psychology and clinical psychology mm-hmm. right prachi so health psychologists work with people or uh, work with health illnesses physical illnesses uh, such as you know uh, diabetes it can be thyroid it can be any uh, physical illness that you have and they work towards seeing what is inhibiting you uh, to ensure your wellness what are few things that are serving as hurdles in your management of these uh, say uh, physical illnesses whereas clinical psychologists work with mental illnesses themselves so the area of work or the target population is different so mental uh, disabilities mental disorders can include say depression it can include uh, anxiety it can include severe disorders like schizophrenia bipolar so the target population is different i hope that gives you some clarity students are continuing mm-hmm. to write uh, a mm-hmm. very relevant question has come from mm-hmm. stuti how do we deal mm-hmm. with people who think that people who goes to a psychologist are crazy <laughs> right i think uh, stuti uh, that's a stigma that the field in general experiences at a very very different level so even if you go to a school counselor you may have your friends making fun of you if you if a senior one is going to a um, well being counselor in their co- company again there may be concerns there may be threat uh, that's something that all of us are fighting i think that's uh, that's a place where whether we study psychology we don't study psychology we end up being a psychologist or not all of us can contribute by making it more acceptable by understanding that if there are some concerns and if help is available for those concerns then why not so i think that's something we can continue fighting for to make psychological help more accessible and acceptable and i hope that you know this question um this question gets an answer soon from all of us it's true Uh, we have another question coming from Karen. Can health psychologists and counselors help patients under critical situation, or maybe those who are about to die, or maybe they are in a terminal illness, mm-hmm. increase their willpower and motivation, and hence save their lives? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, d- definitely, that's possible. Given that, and that has gained more evidence, specifically, say, in COVID times. So when you see the second wave hit, not only was there physical illness; it's not only called the uh, pandemic of covid-19 but a pandemic of anxiety and stress so many times when we are seeing breathlessness happening people dying not just because of a uh, decrease in oxygen level but say uh, different heart attacks uh, oxygen level decreasing without there being any lung uh, blockages so uh, definitely psychologists then play a major role in helping the clients understand the process understanding how their mind can uh you know worsen their physical conditions so providing awareness of educating them about the mind body connect and sometimes also building hope like you said will power can be uh, is a very important uh a very important tool for you to fight the illness that you are experiencing so definitely psychologists play a greater role and also to a certain extent accepting whatever the condition is and planning accordingly so say you know Mm, there is a recent um, 
recent trends specifically say in psycho oncology where you know that this that death becomes a reality but how do we live till that comes in do we live in the fear that we are going to die or do we live till the time we die so those are some things that psychologists work and help the client in that phase uh do psychologists mm-hmm. function uh, multilingually oh yeah you definitely psychologists work multilingually so it's not just say like a uh, verbal language that we use but also say non verbal language given that psychologists also work for inclusion you can also learn of sign language so as many languages as you know increases the reach that you have with the people so multilingualistic multi- multilingualism can definitely help you in this field okay so g vidyanshu has asked a question is it so that psychologists are not much famous in india and not much prosperous maybe he's asking this question because in ncrt we all have yeah. western psychologists right 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 that's true uh, psychology is a western science but definitely given that we are working with people and we are working with indian people here all of us are trying to adapt uh, to the indian context here that's why it becomes important uh, prosperous uh, it's difficult for me to say how prosperous psychology is in india i think it depends on how much we are uh, industrious how much we are passionate and working towards it what i can say is that psychology is indeed a very fulfilling field you're working with creative problems you're working every day with different things so it's in general a very fulfilling field where you're working where you're working not just for the present concern but you're also working uh, in that sense to a larger on a larger problem that the clients or the society is experiencing prosperous uh, i'm not a very i'm not very confident in how to answer that question i don't have any evidence to support it but yeah definitely that's a thing that given that psychology is a western discipline we are catching up the indians are catching up that's right i think we've answered most of the questions that have mm-hmm. come our way mm-hmm. uh nandini has asked a question um just going back is medical necessary in psychology uh no nandini i think uh, serish ma'am just highlighted that in the presentation mm. yeah medicine uh, like if you want to become a psychiatrist then yeah medicine becomes a uh, important part of the training but other than that uh, not necessarily I think we've already exceeded the time limit we should mm-hmm. come to the end of the program and I think the flow of the questions has also stopped yeah <laughs> all right so first of all I would really like to thank you Sarish for taking out time and being with the students and uh, answering their questions uh with so much of uh, rigor and uh, Uh, articulation um i think i've seen you grow over these 5 <laughs> years and i'm talking to you almost after you finished your school and uh, the the main part that i really liked was that you were trying to put the indian context to the work that psychologists are doing in rehabilitation centers adoption centers uh, organizations like nestle so this indigenous nature of psychology is something that our students need to be sensitized to and i would also like to thank all the students who took out time in spite of having your classes from 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock and that to yeah. on the street <laughs> yes you all on saturday yes and on a saturday <laughs> you've all taken time to be here mm-hmm. and uh, enjoy this discussion uh, also Uh, i would like to take uh, uh, i would also like to thank uh, father rector uh, uh, augustine perumalil father principal tj jos sj a vice principal shobha ma'am she usually joins today she is not mm-hmm. joined activity coordinator mrs kc maya and academic coordinator mr ak das for always pushing for such initiatives in school 
and uh, thank you students once again for uh, letting this session be more engaged and interactive and i just hope this covid pandemic ends soon and we get good speakers like sarish to school and get to hear in person Right. Thank you so much, Shubham, for having thank me here for thank this school so for giving an opportunity.